uh, northern areas uh, where today you have the issue of girls uh, education in particular but even boys schools uh, uh, have been under threat and then since the militancy the fact that uh, the um, army the forces were stationed in schools uh, I think a lot of the damage was done to the schools because of that as well uh, and so uh, the condition uh, is uh, not very uh, uh, favorable. I mean, it's not favorable at all. In fact, what is happening is that you hear news about schools being open and then schools being closed, schools constant bombing of schools, schools being reconstructed. So in a sense, uh, it is very difficult to imagine how children would be uh, educated in the tent schools which are set up which are of course temporary uh, tent schools. I know that UNICEF and other organizations, UNESCO and several other agencies uh, have uh, provided funds for trying to educate children. But when your education is interrupted, when there is uncertainty, when there is uh, militancy, when there is uh, the flood situation which came on top of uh, everything, uh, it's very difficult to talk about education in these areas and we do have no data. We really have no data. Even now the census that is being conducted uh, is not being conducted in these areas. Actually, I want to come back to our own vision uh, uh, questions uh, uh, about gender education okay. and uh, girls' education uh, especially. So we talked about uh, uh, these uh, areas and uh, the quality education. And now we want to talk about uh, in these areas, uh, what is the... Uh, the ratio of uh, girls education you know, in KPK, in uh, in Pujab, uh, in uh, Sin, in Baruch Okay, let's take uh, girls who are going to school, all right, children who are in school. Uh, there we find that at the primary level the situation has improved. The gap is less. It hasn't closed completely, uh, but the gender gap is closing. Uh, at, the uh, at the primary level. The problem we have, it's still higher, the gap is wider in rural areas. Uh, one of the reasons being that the age at which children enter school in rural areas is they are older when they come to school. So if a girl is entering school at the age of seven or eight, she is already reaching puberty at 11. She is there's a tendency that she will be pulled out for socio-cultural reasons. Uh, either she will be married off early or she will be put, uh, you know, asked to stay at home and work in the house. So that is one problem. The other problem is the large size of the family in rural areas. We have found the family sizes to be between 8 and 11 in Sindh, for example, rural Sindh. Now, when the family size is large, the girls have to help in the household. If the mother falls ill, the girl will be pulled out of school. If the father falls ill, the boy is put to work to compensate. So there is this gender difference as well as the gender gap in rural areas is much more. The gender gap at the moment is possibly least in Punjab and at the primary level. But beyond the primary level, the number of children who are transiting to the middle, uh, middle school, six, uh, grade 6 and 8, the numbers are very small, but the gender gap is there, but we are finding that more boys seem to be leaving school in rural areas from poor households I'm talking about uh, at the middle school level because of the need to earn for the family, because of rising poverty, because of inflation, boys are not studying at the higher level. So you find the gender gap may be less as you go towards higher education, but then the numbers are so few. If only 3% are going into higher education, if there is no gender gap, that's a very uh, narrow uh, top of this pyramid that we have. So it is really primary, elementary, lower secondary which we need to focus on how to get children to move ahead. Now if you want to talk about cultural issues affecting girls' education, distance from the home is a major issue. Where is the school located? Uh, 
We have had policies like the NCHD, National Commission for Human Development, set up feeder schools, provided feeder teachers in communities to try and get children to go to school. But whereas primary schools may be located within reach of many communities, but not all communities. Even in southern Punjab, we do not have a school in every village. Uh, in Sindh, there are few schools in rural areas. Balochistan, shortage of schools, and there are scattered communities, so it is a major issue because you have small households. So what are you going to do? Uh, so that is one issue. Elementary schools, that is middle level schools, much fewer for girls. Of course, the private sector is coming up, and so there is a tendency for families to send boys to private schools. But we have also found through our research that families make very rational choices on their perception of who they think is more intelligent in the family. If they feel the girl is more intelligent, they will send her to school. If they feel the boy is not so bright, does not want to go, they will put him to work. So they make rational choices. If they feel there is no education in the school, they will pull the child out. You will get a drop out. Uh, but certainly socio-cultural issues affect girls' education. That's a barrier. Mobility is a big barrier. Uh, the government, for example, in Punjab and now also in Sindh provides a middle school stipend to girls, 200 rupees a month. Not only middle school, but also up to matric, grades 8, 9 and 10 which has been very effective. The problem that we find over there is that if the school is very far from the community, the cost of transport is much higher. Right. So families say we spend five to 800 rupees a month. The stipend is only 200. It is not enough. It is enough for poor girls in the urban or cemetery urban areas to go to the school, but to go travel a distance, it is an issue. Mobility for teachers is a major issue, female teachers. And uh, what about the safety of uh, students? Uh, we have uh, uh, some news and uh, there is uh, safety issues as well. Well, there are major issues of safety. There are major issues of sexual harassment, which we find uh, in uh, rural areas where girls are abducted on the way to school. Uh, boys, even boys are molested, they are both subjected to sexual abuse, they are uh, raped, uh, they are uh, abducted. Uh, now of course because of terrorism, boys are picked up and uh, taken away by uh, the terrorist uh, organizations. Uh, or because of poverty, people put their children into madrasas and we know what is happening in the madrasas uh, and uh, there is very little education that is going on in the madrasas. Uh, age of marriage has risen but we still find that it is an issue. But I think the size of the family is also very critical for girls' education and for boys' education. Your organization is working all over Pakistan. What are the underlying uh, gender factors? in the getting girls' education. In which part of Pakistan? More in rural areas, as I said. Uh, more in, uh, in Sindh, rural Sindh, we have found the situation to be very, very bad, particularly in terms of Karokari. And uh, we discovered when we were doing field work just now in Shikarpur, uh, that, uh, I mean, it was very tragic to hear that girls are told by their families and in the schools that you have to be prepared to become a Kari. That system is so ingrained, those, uh, uh, what would we call them, uh, values, tribal values or customs, I won't even, I don't call them values, I would call it a custom, is so ingrained uh, that that is uh, a big hindrance. Uh, multiple marriages, the fact that a man has three to four wives, we found that very common in rural Sindh, also in southern Punjab, in rural areas. Uh, so that is a hindrance because it means that a man with three wives can have up to 15 children. Uh, that creates uh, problems uh, within the family, outside the family. So southern Punjab, uh, there is a major issue. Uh, in um, urban areas, I think the issue for girls' education is more economic. It is less of safety. There is sexual harassment on the way to school. Uh, there is sexual harassment of teachers on the way to their jobs, particularly if they have to travel to rural areas at bus stops, when they change buses. Uh, so the longer the duration of the travel, 
the more uh, susceptible uh, the women and the girls are uh, to sexual uh, harassment and sexual uh, abuse. Uh, in Balochistan also we have uh, customs which are interfere in Khaybar uh, Pakhtunkhwa uh, that uh, there is the whole issue of honor killings. Uh, so these are... Uh, we didn't talk about Azad Kashmir. Azad Kashmir, uh, till the floods uh, came uh, about, uh, was doing very well in education. Uh, it had a very good system, even in girls' education, yes. Uh, but since the floods, I think there has been a major issue because people are still not being compensated. Yeah. Even today I was reading in the newspaper that they will be compensated, given 20,000 before June, which means governments wait till the flood budget is about to end on the 30th of June and then they will dispense and uh, it is already expected that there may be floods this year as well. So uh, Azad Kashmir was doing much better for girls education. Uh, so were the northern areas in fact, especially Hunza uh, and because of the uh, local community and their attitude, their own attitude towards education was doing much better, but particularly in uh, Hunza. Uh, and there were community based uh, schools uh, set up uh, in those areas. Uh, actually, uh, girls are voting boys academically in Pakistan despite of these uh, problems. Uh, they are entering uh, the professions in ever uh, greater number. Mm -hmm. Is the celebration of uh, women or something not good happens with them later? Sorry, uh, can you... Uh, actually, I'm saying that girls are overtaking boys. Yes. Okay. Of these, yes. All these uh, problems. Mm -hmm. They are entering profe uh, professions 